G'day guys, what's cracking? It's Ralph here and it's like 5 a.m. and I'm teaming up with Lisa Frost. Hey. This is really cool. We're doing a collab down at Fingal Headland. We're having the collaborative challenge of who can take the most creative photos, um, which I'm a bit scared about because I've seen some of Ralph's no, creative works. So. Yeah, no, I'm scared too. This is a beautiful part of the country. It's northern New South Wales, just heading onto the Gold Coast. And so um, we're going to bring to you some of its beauty this morning. Um, if you like this content and you want to subscribe, I'd encourage that. And you can see my videos on Tuesday mornings or Saturday mornings every week on creative photography. How was that for you? Oh, it was a rush at the start. <laughs> I know. I, uh, I, I'm used to just, I go find one comp composition and sit on it. I'm not, I'm not too sure how it went. I was a bit stressed. Yeah. I don't like being stressed when I take photos. You know, no. It's just it's therapy time, you just get to chill. And I was like, oh, I feel stressed because you're rushing from one thing to the next. Going, oh, I hope, I hope this is good enough. And I hope that's good enough. Yes. Whereas usually you sort of wait for it to become good enough. That's exactly what I was feeling. And then, so when I ended up down the bottom, looking at the ocean, I just went, okay, now, nice. now I'm just gonna take some photos of the ocean yeah, yeah, and yeah. relax. And there's this epic, epic swell where the incoming tide hits the outcoming tide and just bursts up the water. And it's just captivating, isn't it? I'm just looking at it. I'm not yep. taking any photos, just looking at it. It's just incredible. Yeah, no, it's, it's beautiful. Wasn't the best morning for photography no, but it's a great. great morning to be out so what we thought we'd do is we're gonna put on um, now our six shots but we're not gonna tell you who's is who's and we want you to have a look through those six shots and then pause the video and put a number in the comment about which one you like best and if you want to rate them you can rank them whatever uh, we just thought it'd be really fascinating because we each have very different styles and it'd be interesting to see if Lisa's followers uh, like your photos naturally better and my followers like mine, or there's a difference. And so if you want to put a comment about which ones you like, they'll be our three most creative. And if they want to stick around, they can see how we took some of those photos. Well, if you're um, on my channel, I'd encourage you to head over to Lisa's now, have a look at it. She's got a brilliant eye for composition, especially in rainforest settings and landscape settings, um, and talks you through how she takes those shots. It's a really um, beautiful uh, imagery that she has, and I cannot recommend her highly enough. Let me just jump in here for a second. Lisa and I didn't even talk about any of the images. We took those six images you just saw. There was no conversation about it. And then at the same time, we edited those photos completely separately. And then we uploaded them to a drive to share completely separately. And we looked at those photos and realized that we'd both taken a rock shot. We'd both taken a lighthouse shot. And we'd both taken a wave shot when we had all the options. And that's happened to me at other times before. It's fascinating how I'm... I don't know, maybe photographers think all the same. Maybe part of the challenge is we need to think about it differently. Hope you enjoy those images. I'm now gonna kick on and show you some of those images and others that I took, how I took them, and have a bit of an explore around Fingalhead. Come with me. All right, the pressure's on. So my first shot is to take a um, landscape of the lighthouse that's coming up 
just there, right? So I've situated myself back, I've crawled into the bushes. I've got the pandanus as a bit of a frame for the shot that draws you into the shot. I've got my 16 mil on, so I'm super, super wide at 2.8. However, I took my ISO right down, so I'm sitting on 250. And the reason is that it's, if it's longer than that, it loses some of the detail and the beauty when the lighthouse lights up the plants and the trees around, and also when the sun is coming up. So my hope is that I can pull off, pull back on the highlights in editing and bring up some of the color in the sunrise that's very gradually starting to peak over the um, surface of the horizon whilst holding some of the stars that you can still see in focus. So, so I'm pretty happy with that. I've got my 16 mil on, which is my Canon lens on my Nikon frame with a tech art adapter. I'll put a video at the end about how you can do all that and use different lenses on different cameras, brands that is. And then the only thing to say, before I get attacked by like an owl or something, the only thing left to say is that I then use autofocus on the lighthouse. So when the light comes through, I bang the autofocus and it focuses the camera and then I flick it to manual focus so that I know the subject in the foreground, which is the lighthouse, is the sharpest thing in the shot. All right, now I've ducked round and I've got a different perspective of the lighthouse, which I realize you can't see, but it's actually framed entirely by some foliage. And what's beautiful about that is when the light of the lighthouse hits the foliage, it glows you get this epic like highlighted effect on the side of the foliage however you get it blown out by the light so i've had to take down my shutter speed down to about 15 seconds and i've had to take down my iso down to 100 which loses some of the detail of the stars but that's okay because they're fading anyway because the sun's coming up and it really highlights i don't think i like the shot but I took the shot. I've shot Fingal a number of times, it's beautiful. And so the real challenge today is how do you get a creative angle on something you're so familiar with, which is the beauty of photography. And so I ventured down here where I've not been before. I've never been this low. So there's the sea just in front of us and there's Cook Island. Um, and that's looking over to Coolangatta. We have this beautiful like uh, textured foreground as we look out to where the sun is gonna be. There's some really, really thick cloud on the horizon. That means the sun isn't going to light up the sky so much as it's gonna come above and then we'll get some sunburst out of it. I'm probably not gonna be here when sunburst time come, happens because there's some epic waves just smashing together and these like water spurts that I have to get over to. I'm hoping Lisa hasn't beat me to the punch. The challenge of this particular location is you've got a lot of shadow in the foreground. It's dark in the foreground and really blown out and light in the background. Um, you've also got a lot of foreground and a lot of background. So I've had to do two things. I've had to bracket, which means you shoot at different exposures. We've spoken about that before. And then also on focus stacking. Well, you can see the waves like rolling in, but they come through the causeway. There you go. So I'm pretty happy with this shot. I think there's a lot of texture in it. I'll warm it up later on because it still looks pretty cold. It looks pretty blue and, and, and glassy. I actually am looking for a warm finish. And then I'm going to move down into the rock. Yeah. Not, not the crazy one right out there, not that one. Not that one, and not that one, but just down here. Because I think um, there'll be some epic angles to have there if this creative challenge is on. It's the problem with creativity. How do you judge what's creative and what's not, even if it is uh, risking your own life? <laughs> okay, so I did it. I went out there. Um, I didn't want to vlog while I was doing that and fall into the ocean and die. So instead, I just took some shots and I'll put them up for you right now so you can see a variety of what we had, but the water comes racing through the causeway, whoosh, hits this small little section of, um, of rock that's really low and explodes up like that. It exploded all over me. I got wet, drenched, saved the camera, nearly fell in. So tip of the day, don't get your gear wet, it's too expensive. What a brilliant tip. I'm glad you stuck around for that, aren't you? Um, okay, now I think I'm done here. I'm going to head over the other side of the headland. Um, and that's where I think Lisa is because she's not here. So I'm going to go over there and see what there is to be had. Um, and then that might be a wrap because the sun's coming up. I'll put the bird in the air and get some sick footage. And... <laughs>
So the sun is well and truly up now, but that creates some amazing backlighting for the waves. And so here's what I've done. I zoomed in on that. So you've got some of the, the rock and I, that's at 70. I can go all the way through to 200. And then I put my shutter speed up to 800 at 3.5. So it's correct, it's exposed correctly on 100 ISO. And then those waves, there you go. You just got real time. This is what we got. Look how good that looks. Oh, so good. And I can just crop it in like this. Mm, oh my gosh, yes. Come on, come on. It's still looking good. Oh, so that's on the 70 to 200. And the reason I shoot a bit wider and rather than crop in is because you don't know where the crest of the wave is going to be or exactly where the wave is because it shifts around based on where the swell is. So doing that and calculating as you go is, is really tricky because you miss things. So if you shoot a bit wider, you can crop in later on to exactly what you want. And if you shoot on 800, it captures the textures and the action of the water. Nothing's blur. It's all really super sharp, which is what you want for this kind of photography. And I'll just show you what's happening um, just behind me because it looks just spectacular. So you've got the sun coming in here, but it creates this perfect backlight. So when there's a thin water on the waves, you see the aqua line on those, those waves? It just looks beautiful. And when the tide hits it, oh, I'm sport for choice. I'm spoilt for choice. And I hope I've done enough to get over the line. I hope. <laughs> what a morning. Thank you for joining me. It's been ace to hang out with Lisa. I'd encourage you to go over to her channel and give it a look. She has an amazing eye for composition, especially in rainforest and uh, those landscape settings. It will not be a waste of your time. So get stuck into that. I've got some merch out if you're interested. There's a link below. If you want to shout me a coffee, I'd be stoked with that. I've been really enjoying a couple of you who have uh, shouted me a coffee. It's been much more delicious than your average coffee. I've also got presets out. So if you're interested in looking at changing your photos um, at the drop of a button uh, to something more creative, then uh, it'll save you time with editing. Head to my presets. All the links are below. Thanks heaps for joining me. Subscribe, thumbs up. I'll see you soon. Bye. What am I doing? Shooting up there. <laughs>